So since there's nothing else of interest here, let's get out of here. You know what I miss? The running shoes, you know, in order to not be restricted by that slow as a snail riding at turtle speed. Anyway, as you might expect, this is Bianca's house. Don't know why it's being advertised as Bianca's house and not her parents, but whatever. We're introduced to a subplot that's going to uh, be... Uh, well, I'd say it will be important later on in the game, but actually it's not. It's the fact that... Uh, Bianca's father, to be perfectly honest with you, is sort of a jerk. He's overprotective, and you all know how annoying overprotective parents can be at times. Let's talk to him. What nonsense is this? Seriously! Going on an adventure with Pokémon is the standard. I'd be far more worried if she didn't do that and stayed home like you want her to. Uh, okay, well, why don't you do something about it then? That kind of behavior towards your own daughter is just an unacceptable. And even she said it's part of growing up. Tell him that! Not me! Anyway, uh, Bianca's room is even more boring than the other two we've seen, so... Let's get out of Dodge and head over to Juniper's lab. Oh, there's another NPC over there. Hope she's got interesting, something interesting to say. Do you think traveling pe with Pokemon changes people? Me too. No, 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 no. Okay, so this is just some pseudo uh, philosophical bullcrap. So here we are, Juniper Pokemon Lab. So talking to Bianca yields uh, that's a secret, okay? Because well, yeah, she's sort of ashamed of her father. I perfectly understand her. So. Get right in! This is Professor Juniper's lab, and as you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than other labs in the series. It's so small, in fact, that you can see uh, the room that she uses as, as her home right next to the lab, and <laughs> Sharon is um, feeling rather hasty today. I'm gonna, I said it, but I'm going to say it again. I like Sharon a lot as a character. Such a shame that... Uh, all that potential that he had uh, wasn't really fully used, unfortunately, but nonetheless, uh, he, he fu fundamentally, he, he's still um, a lot better than May and Barry as far as rivals go, for reasons that we're going to get into later as well, and uh, no, I'm going to pass on uh, giving uh, my Snivy a nickname, as uh, you probably know I never nicknamed my Pokémon. Now the reason why we got Pokemon and Sharon once again cuts right to the chase. I don't know if he's saying that to impress Juniper or because he's in a hurry. There's no time to waste. So, um, yeah, she's going to explain what the Pokedex is for uh, whoever has never played a Pokemon game before this one. Pokedex basically is nothing but a glorified checklist of which Pokemon you've seen, which Pokemon you've caught, and when you catch a Pokemon, you get some extra information, such as height, weight, and a bit of interesting flavor text, which can range from humorous to downright creepy at times. No, I don't want to. Fortunately, it's, uh, it's not one of these no's that result in a game over, as happens sometimes in games. Oh, uh, now she's being really inspirational, even though all she's really asking out of us is to um, fill out a checklist, because that's what it is. No! Okay, she's saying the same thing over, so okay, fine, I'm going to fill up your damn Pokedex. Now here's what I find sketchy about the Pokedex. Uh, you know how the height and weight and flavor text are uh, acquired when you catch a Pokemon? Well, those simply have to be programmed into the Pokedex beforehand, right? By someone else? So, why is she st sending us out to do research that's already been done in the first place? Never thought of that, huh? Maybe I'm making you question the whole fundamentals of filling up the Pokedex to begin with. It's something funny that I've been thinking lately, and it's rather weird and, and it makes no sense. Anyway, as you can see, Bianca doesn't really have a whole lot of self-confidence because of her overprotective father. Uh, she doesn't want to displease her father, but at the same time, she wants to do her own thing, and she's sort of torn between the two. 
So, I don't know, what are you and Snivy going to do? Well, uh, once I beat uh, Lenora, I'm going to be using Snivy as a PC box decoration, so that much is certain. And as you can see, this is uh, what serves as Juniper's home, I guess, that uh, other room in the building. So here's my mom who was waiting outside the lab. I wonder what she wants. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What did the professor have to say? Well, something that makes no sense when you stop and really think about it. <laughs> Actually, I can't believe it. I knew she was going to ask. Well, I, I think this woman right here has played some Pokemon games in her day. Anyway, we got uh, the town map, which is... Quite frankly, in this game, absolutely useless. You shouldn't get lost in this version of Unova because it's just so linear. Of course, it gets a lot better and uh, with branching paths and everything in uh, Black and White 2, but in this game, this iteration of Unova is so straightforward, you should never need the town map to begin with. So, uh, apparently, uh, cleaning up my room hasn't been done yet. Of course, it's got to be a freaking project. You saw the state in which that room was in, so she's gonna get to it right now, blah, 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 you'll be safe wherever you go. Well, we were given the worst batch of starters that's ever been made, so I wouldn't be 100% sure about that, but then again, I guess a Pokémon is better than no Pokémon at all. Except it's a Magikarp, of course. So, our journey is about to begin. If I use the town map, I will always know where I am. Never been out to Nova, huh? I'm saying that because, of course, the, the place is just so damn linear. I'll show you uh, once I get an occasion to do that. And I guess this occasion is going to come right now. So let's open the menu, go to the bag, and let's see the town map and hotkey it for, uh, for convenience's sake, just in case. And as you can see, it's just so linear. The northeastern section of Unova can't be accessed in the post game, so you're walking in a straight line pretty much the entire game. So let's head over to Route 1 where Professor Juniper is waiting for us. But before, uh, we're going to partake in a little best friends forever ritual, I guess, where all three of us are going to take uh, our first step on uh, Route 1 at the same time. And it's automatic, it's not uh, like uh, in some of these games where you gotta synchronize it, otherwise you fail. This was just entirely pointless and meant, I guess, as a way to emphasize the friendship between these three. Anyway, uh, Professor Juniper, as promised, is going to show us uh, how to meet and catch Pokémon. So, okay, Pokédex pages. As I said before, it's a checklist to see what you've seen and, and what you've caught. You obtain even more information. That we that's already been researched before, so it's not like we're doing anything actually difficult. So you head into the tall grass and you meet a random Pokemon that's chosen from a selection that varies depending on the location you're at. So you use fight, Minchino is going to use pound to weaken the Pokemon and send it all the way into the red. That's actually Pretty convenient that it only takes one hit to do that, but yeah, you really want to weaken the Pokémon first, unless you're playing Heart Gold and Soul Silver's Bug Catching Contest, as I've already explained in that special video. But you want to throw a Pokéball once the Pokémon's been weakened, and if you're lucky, you're going to catch the Pokémon. So that's basically how it works. Now, I don't know what she's going to do with her with that patch rat because it's completely worthless, but for the sake of demonstration, it worked pretty well. And if you want to make it even easier, you can use a stronger Pokeball, or you can inflict status on the Pokemon. Like, um, well, you don't want to... Oh, well, Juniper's saying it right out. You can make it fall asleep or paralyze it. Uh, since she's a professor, she knows better than to mention burn and poison because those have the potential to kill the Pokémon you're trying to catch unless it has something like, uh, say, Magic Guard, for example. So she's heading over to Accumula Town, which is uh, the next town that we're going to be visiting. She forgot to say that Pokémon jump out at you in the tall grass, but um, yeah, she didn't say it outright, but I guess the demonstration made that pretty clear nonetheless. So, we're all going to be heading our separate ways to Accumula Town. 
where the most exciting thing to do is to shop for Pokeballs. So once again, it's a rather small town with really nothing interesting to do over there. So, um, yeah, la la la. I know, the professor is waiting for us. She's been waiting for us already, three times already, and we're not even half an hour in. So, uh, Bianca is organizing a little competition here where the, the one who caught the most Pokemon on Route 1 wins. Now, uh, no, don't do it, Sharon! It's not interesting! There's nothing but Pat Rats and Lily Pops on this route! So, as you can see, I'm not gonna bother catching either one of these Pokemon because I don't I just don't want to use them and I would advise any sane person to do the same because come on who's gonna want a, a watchhog or even a Stoutland on uh, on his team even though Stoutland isn't a totally lost cause it's still a fairly average normal type which means it's not really worth using so yeah, when you want to battle or catch your Pokémon, you want to go into the grass. But when you want, well, when you want to rush to the next place or rush to a previous Pokémon center or something, you want to avoid it as much as possible. Make an effort to talk to everyone. Chances are that they will have something useful to tell you or even give you items. So this is always a good idea to always, always talk to everyone whenever you can. Now, as I said before, on this route, there are two kinds of Pokémon. First, there's Patrat, which is basically this game's Rattata, as I'm, ge as I'm getting a potion from an NPC I was saying just, just now. But yeah, Patrat is this game's Rattata, and in a generation where they went out of their way to make sure there were no terribly atrocious Pokémon, Watchog, which is the evolution of Patrat, really is the only terribly atrocious Pokémon. So, don't even bother with it. Because the whole thing with Watchog is that when you use it yourself, it sucks ass. But when you meet one in the wild, or you fight uh, one that belongs to a trainer, then some serious shit is going to happen, because Watchog's level up move pool is full of really, really annoying moves. And we're talking about moves like Super Fang, Hypnosis, Send Attack, Detect, Confuse Ray, all the gamut of really annoying moves you really don't want to have to deal with. So, Snivy learned Vine Whip, which unfor unfortunately, with the Tackle Attack Power buff, Vine Whip is just barely stronger than Tackle when stabbed. So, um, uh, that makes the... Route one's already over? Jeez! I wasn't ready for that. I mean, I knew it was a short route, but I still wanted to uh, fight a few more Pokémon. I want to head up to uh, level 8, because uh, there's going to be an important fight in Accumula Town that's coming, out, that's coming up. So I really want to be level 8 for that fight. That extra level is going to make a whole lot of difference if I bother to go get it, so that's what I'm going to do. But as I was saying, the main draw of Vine Whip at this point is the potential for super effective moves. Uh, now, the other Pokémon that's found on uh, this route, we saw a few Lily Pups, that's the one. It eventually evolves into Stoutland, which, as I said before, is a quasi-acceptable Pokémon as far as normal types go. But, uh... I still wouldn't recommend using it in-game. It's got a few cool abilities like Intimidate and Sand Rush that are probably a bit better suited to a competitive play. In fact, it's a regular member of the underused tier where it works very well as a Sand Rush abuser to uh, attack uh, foes when under the effects of a Sandstorm. So, uh, I guess I'm gonna need only one more Pokémon in order to reach level 8 if it will just come out. Thank you very much. By the way, something that I want to point out. The battles are of a much higher pace than in previous generations. As you can see, the animations are in general much faster. The HP bar moves a lot faster too. So even when fighting a Blissey, you won't be tearing your hair out while waiting for the HP to go down. So that's another huge advantage that this game has over previous generations. I'm just gonna finish him off with a tackle, and down it goes. 18 experience points are enough for level 8, so I'll see you next time when we explore Accumula Town.